There's so much that we can change and improve with your hormone panel, with the way that you eat, move, think, feel, and supplement. I would love for somebody to explain like I'm five, what are hormones and how does knowing more about hormone levels in your body help improve your health? I'm happy to talk about hormones. I think you would, yes. <laughs> so I think of hormones as text messages that get sent throughout the body, telling often a distant organ what to do. There's local effects, there's distant effects, but hormones really drive what you're interested in. And what's key to understand when it comes to uh, those that are born female uh, and women is that there's so much tumult. So women go through much more dramatic changes related to their hormonal composition. So both uh, males and females go through puberty, trying to be non-binary as I speak into this, and please correct me um, as, I, as I go along. But then when it comes to pregnancy, postpartum, perimenopause, menopause, we go through these dramatic changes where the the delta, the, the change in the slope of hormone production is so much steeper than what you see in those that are born male. So I think it's essential to understand, as you said, in a time series, what's going on with your hormones. I think it's important to have a picture of what you're experiencing. You know, one of the things, I've got two younger sisters and I was asked by them, hey, when should I do a hormone panel? And I said to them, listen, my preference would be that you do it in your 20s or 30s, at the latest in your early 40s. Get a base case, get a baseline of where you are when you feel kind of at your best so that you could then return to that point later in perimenopause and menopause. Anybody else measuring hormones in the clinic? Um, and what do you do with them and what do you recommend uh, to your patients? Well, we, rec um, we obviously measure hormones in the clinic and you know, I, I love what Sarah said in terms of where you feel best. So there's the data, it's really important to look at to be able to drive decisions, but also it's very individual. Where does someone feel great? And I think really shooting for that while keeping everything within the safe ranges is important. So let's talk about different ways that we can be actionable about our health. Um, so I would ask, what are some examples of things that women might do differently after, let's say, having their, their hormone me levels measured or other like critical biomarkers for their health span? Well, I think nutrition is a, a fundamental piece to all of this. When we think about when we're younger, we're really driven by hormones. And as we age, there are certain mechanisms that change particularly when we think about body composition, um, skeletal muscle is less driven by hormones and it becomes, um, let me say this, let me say it this way, the skeletal muscle becomes less efficient. So its ability to sense nutrients like dietary protein, amino acids, in particular some of these branch chains decreases. So when an individual is younger, to get to kind of specifics and, and that's helpful for um, the individual, you can stimulate skeletal muscle with five to 10 grams. When you're a younger child, it's much easier. As we age and that balance shifts less towards hormone and growing up, we have to rely more heavily on nutrition. So dietary protein is key for muscle health in particular to overcome some of these challenges of aging, which is anabolic resistance. Mm -hmm. And so that becomes really critical. It is critical. Your conversation makes me want to make a smoothie right now, have some amino acids, so I really appreciate that. <laughs> Afterwards. <laughs> Afterwards. After we twerk and, and do all right. this. There, there we go. Yeah. yeah, so I would I would maybe come a little broader. And what I talk to about uh, with my patients about after they get a hormone panel is there's so much that we can change and improve with your hormone panel, with the way that you eat, move, think, feel, and supplement. So I, I think of those as a foundation for addressing hormones. I'm not someone who goes straight to a pharmaceutical to address you know, insulin with metformin or low testosterone with topping them off with testosterone. I, I like to think about, okay, how can we change the way that you're eating? So say you've got a problem with uh, estrogen or with insulin. Let's take insulin as an example. 
we know that within 48 hours, you can change, you can start to change the insulin signal just with your fork, just with the food that you're putting on your plate. So I think that that is so empowering to realize that much of your hormonal balance is modifiable with lifestyle medicine. Can you actually define hormonal balance for us? Because <laughs> that's always a tricky one. Um, but Yeah, I think of hormonal balance as almost a Goldilocks position with the hormones that are the most central. So in women, I think of cortisol, estrogen, thyroid, testosterone, insulin. So hormonal balance is where those hormones are not too low and not too high. So with testosterone as an example, if you're a woman who's say, you know, 48 years young and you've got a low testosterone level, it's gonna affect your ability to maintain your muscle mass. It's gonna affect your agency. It's gonna affect your confidence. It's probably gonna affect your libido. It might also affect vaginal dryness. If you're a woman in her 40s with high testosterone on the androgen androgenic side, uh, you know, the phenotype is usually polycystic ovary syndrome, you're at greater risk of cardiovascular disease. So that androgen level is one of the best predictors of your future risk of cardiovascular disease. So by hormonal balance, I mean you've got these hormones each in the right position, not too low, not too high. And is that individual for every person, I imagine. Well, how, do you, how do you decide got, you know, what that balance needs ranges, to look like? We've got reference ranges from these overlapping bell curves, which I think is such an important point. But then you also want to personalize because there are some people who had high-ish testosterone most of their life. Mm -hmm. And so when they're you know, in the lower half of the normal range with their testosterone, they might feel symptoms. Mm -hmm. So you use the bell curves but then you also apply a level of personalization. Mm -hmm.